This video is brought to you by the Bates College Digital and Computational Studies Program under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 4.0 license. This is a one take video. It means I'm recording live while I'm doing things. Um, so it means that it's sometimes harder for me to, to track. What I wanted to uh, illustrate are some things about programming in Python. If you forget or don't first reinstall Python. If you were over in make code land, you're not going to have CircuitPy here. Um, and if you don't have, if it, your micro bit, uh, sorry, micro bit, your CPX is not showing up as CircuitPy, you're not going to be able to uh, program it using Mu. Mu. Um, and so, <clears throat> let me get this on the screen. Um, first thing I'm going to do, so I saw that I, I dragged my, I set my CPX into boot mode, I dragged the Python uh, UF2 file onto it, and I'm going to open up main.py. And so right now I'm running the, the example code from the end of my setup instructions. Now when I showed you this in class, um, it, it was really kind of magical. So that's not good. We don't want that. Um, but what I am going to do, and I will then share this change with all of you, is I am going to get rid of your need to call setup pixels. I'll put it somewhere else. So now it means that from now on we'll always just be able to write uh, code that looks like this. So let's take it from a blank page. It's not really a great place to start, so let's figure out what we always want as a start. We're always going to want, going to, want to import the DCS library. That's important. Um, it provides us with useful functions for controlling the CPX. We're always going to want to have some things that we do on the start, and we're always going to want to have some things that we do over and over. <clears throat> and I borrow that directly from make code. So the first thing I do is I put two comments into my code, one that says on start and one that says forever. Python ignores these. However, they are there for me. And by putting them here, it helps me see where I am in my code. And you can even go nuts here. Like these, anything that starts with a hash sign is, is a comment. So you can make some really cool, like you can, you can make some really cool headers and then you can copy and paste and that's, that's awesome. Um, what else can we do that we can do? How awesome is that? Um, my point is, is that Python ignores all of this because it starts with a hash sign. It's a comment intended for a human. But that also means that we can make things, um, leave ourselves notes or make things stand out. Um, we will almost always write while true. For now, it's OK to say that we will always write while true. What that says is that our program starts running at the top, and it runs one line at a time until it gets here. And then we indent four spaces. And Moo will do that for you automatically. And everything that is indented under the while true is part of the loop. In make code, this is like being inside of a for loop or inside of an if. Um, and. Uh, so some things I might do. Um, in the Rosetta Stone, I say that you can, that the notion of setting a variable, so we could say light level to the current sensor reading. So if I wanted to set the variable light level to the current sensor reading, I would say light level equals, and then I need to know how do I get the light level. Something that I have to finish putting together for you today is a little bit more documentation than the Rosetta Stone. If you want, you can actually... How do I get rid of all of this? 
All right, well, anyway, if you want, you can look inside of dcs.py, which should be on your micro bit, and you can see everywhere that it says def is actually a function. Now, this is this is not the this is not the best way to do it, and I don't even have all the comments that should be in there yet. So I'm going to provide you some documentation. Um, but if I want to get the light level, inside of DCS Pi is a function called getLux. And what this says is there's a piece of code called getLux, and we are not giving it any additional information. The parentheses are where we put information that the function needs to get its work done. Um, and so we're just saying, please give me the light level. At that point, I can ask questions like if, and here's the pattern for an if. It's the word if with two parentheses and a colon. That's what you have to write. Technically, the parentheses are not needed, but they're a good visual. So you have to say if the stuff inside the parentheses is true, colon, do the stuff that is indented inside of the if. So again, it's just like make code where we said if something is true, then do the stuff inside. So here I might say if the light level is less than 2. Now, this is different than make code where everything was, uh, make code was 0 to 255, whereas get lux is actual lux. Lux are actually a unit of measurement for light. And so those values are much lower than what make code would have given us. Um, so you're actually going to have to do some experimentation and find out what works. So for a moment, um, I'll say set all pixels to red, else set all pixels to blue. And I will save my program. That will automatically update my code. Now you can't see this. My CPX has just turned blue. <clears throat> so that means that it is, it must be, the light level must be greater than 2 in my office. But if I put my finger over the light sensor, nothing happens. I'm sure something was supposed to happen. So nothing happened. That leads me to wonder what's going on. So I'm going to add something called a print statement. I'm going to say that I want to print the light level. I hit save. That's a real. This is this is useful. Now we click REPL. Oh, it's an error. It says in main.py set all pixels to set da 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 There we go. I hit Control D to restart. So it was apparently running some old code. All right. So I'm getting readings in my office around 20 to 30. And when I put my finger over the light sensor, it goes down to around 5. So what I should say is that if it is less than 15, and I hit Save, and we can see it restart now. Oh, that's cool. When I put my finger over the sensor, it's changing. But also notice how sometimes I get this crazy reading that's really high. Hmm. Not sure what to do about that. So we could say if it is less than 15, do red. And then we could say L if light level is less than 50, turn blue. And what'll happen? Well, that's kind of advanced Python, so let's just, it's not really advanced, but um, let's just leave it as else. We'll just do if else for now. But the important pieces here, so you can see some of how my code is coming together. This is a pattern for assigning to a variable. This is a pattern for using a function. That means it has a name and it has stuff inside these parentheses. And then we have a pattern for if, which is if the stuff in the parentheses is true, do the stuff that we indented. And we can also have an else, 
and the pattern for that is else colon do the stuff that is indented. Um, I have more documentation to give you. I'm going to work on that because you need to know what kinds of things like get lux and set all pixels to are available to you when you're programming the CPX in Python. Uh, you've seen the REPL. That's what this is called. You can turn that on and off. And as it says, use Control D to reload. And that tells the circuit, uh, the circuit Playground Express to reload your Python program. Uh, I hope that is a useful demo. I would encourage you to ask questions. And have a wonderful Friday.